Some dude is selling a stock 1970 Dodge Challenger with a 440 engine and a white paint job. And you want to buy it? Kim, I may be stupid, what? but I'm not bloody stupid. I want to say I want to buy it, so he'll let me test drive it. A 1970 Dodge Challenger with a white paint job? Oh, uh, Kowalski. Kowalski from Vanishing Point. Mate, it's a fucking classic. If I can get this guy to let me drive it without him, I will blow the doors off that bitch. What's Vanishing Point? What's Vanishing Point? Abs, I'm supposed to be the little one. It's just one of the best American movies ever made. Give me the camera. Give, give, it, give, it, give it off. Give it off. Give down. It, down. Give it. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex Navarro, and welcome to a tear-assing, speed-addled edition of The Besties. This is the feature where we, the editors of Screen, induct our favorite films of all time into our own personal Hall of Fame. In honor of our semi-official angry, tortured dudes in cars week here on the site, uh, I felt this was the absolutely perfect time to add one of my favorite car movies of all time in 1971's B-movie cult classic Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point was one of those films that critics of its time didn't really get, given its sort of bizarre existentialist elements, post-revolutionary tone, and abundance of unkept sideburns. But in the years following its release, an audience has grown to celebrate everything about this cross-country journey of a vagabond road warrior known only as Kowalski. The movie is purposely vague in setting up his hard-driving hero, opening with him already very much on the run from multiple highway police agencies and about to run smack dab into a bulldozer, literally, of a roadblock. We meet Kowalski at the moment when he realizes he's nearly licked. Cops are coming from all sides and the road forward cannot be traversed. After a momentary pondering, we see him hop back behind the wheel and speed back toward the roadblock. But before we know his fate, there's like a hundred minutes of like previous adventure to check out. I mean, it would have been a pretty short movie otherwise. At the true beginning, we find Kowalski as a burned out car delivery man, speeding into a Denver garage with a fresh new ride. Upon exiting the vehicle, he immediately demands his boss give him a new delivery assignment, one specifically bound for San Francisco. Look, I gotta get started out tonight, Sand. You know which car. Which? After meeting up with his personal speed dealer and getting hopped up for the trip, Kowalski makes a rather dicey bet. I'm gonna bet you the tab for the Bennies. I'm gonna be in Frisco. I'm gonna call you three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Now, if I don't, double the deal next time around. Bet. Bet. What follows is a rubber-burning blast through the remote highways of the American Southwest. The movie starts out as a pretty standard chase picture, with Kowalski almost purposely baiting cops as he goes along, toying with them with his superior driving prowess. Hey, pull over. Pull over. You, you Things start to unravel a bit more complexly, however, when we start seeing flashbacks of his previous life, combined with details read aloud by various radio dispatchers on the hunt for the mad driver. Honorable discharge from Army, 1964, Medal of Honor. Those details are still pretty spotty, though. It's an ambiguous portrait of a man seemingly driven entirely by the desire to prove to the world he can do what he wants while flying directly in the face of authority. Things continue to turn pretty vision questy as the movie progresses. He ends up out in the remote Nevada desert and hooks up with a chaw-chewing snake charmer under the employ of a Pentecostal congregation, run by a creepy little man known, quite literally, as Jay Hova. From there, he encounters everyone from flamboyantly gay stick-up artists. Why are you laughing, Mary? To chopper riding hippies. And cloaked hitchhiking metaphors for death. I've been waiting for you for a long time. Oh, how I've waited for you. It seems like the entire world knows about Kowalski's plight, and a lot of that is thanks to a seemingly psychic and definitively blind radio DJ named Super Soul, played by the great Cleavon Little. Ah! Super Soul gets word of Kowalski early on and goes on to engage in a one-sided dialogue with him over the course of the movie, effectively guiding the man he deems to be the last great American hero. Get through him, baby! Get through him! It's interesting the way that Kowalski sort of ends up being a, kind of a symbol for the post-counterculture. Director Richard C. Safarian uses Kowalski's journey to comment on kind of the uneasy mood of society in the years following Woodstock, and in the process, kind of also made a pretty kick-ass chase movie. Chris, watch it. Watch it. Well, watch it! Finishing Point features some of the best car chase cinematography of any movie of its era, shifting between goofy, jump-heavy fun to spectacular, highly dangerous wrecks, 
all set against some really gorgeous desert backdrops. The movie and its audience made an icon out of the white 1970 Dodge Challenger featured within. Far more so, actually, than the man driving it, in actor Barry Newman, who might just be the barriest dude to ever be named Barry. Fun fact, Safarian actually wanted Gene Hackman to play Kowalski, but Fox, the studio that produced the film, insisted on Newman. That's kind of weird, right? Though its box office was modest and uh, critically it wasn't exactly celebrated, you can actually find Vanishing Point stamps scattered throughout modern pop culture. Primal Scream actually released an album in the 90s that served as an alternate soundtrack to the movie, and director Quentin Tarantino all but fetishized both the Challenger and some of the movie's specific car chases in his grindhouse tribute, Death Proof. For those who haven't experienced Vanishing Point, uh, it is my opinion that lovers of both car chases and existentialism alike ought to find something to like about the movie. It's in the highest echelon of the great B-movies, uh, a cheaply produced piece of out-of-nowhere brilliance that probably really has no right to be as interesting or entertaining as it actually is. It's simultaneously a fascinating piece of filmmaking and unapologetic car porn. And frankly, it's just one of my favorite movies of all time. So, what do you think? Have I driven off the road well traveled here into the desert of the absurd? Or do you love Vanishing Point as much as I do? Comment away and name some of your other favorite all time favorite chase flicks while you're at it. Maybe one of them will one day find their way into the hallowed halls of the besties. Once again, I've been Alex Navarro, reminding you that despite allusions to the contrary, mainlining speed on cross country journeys probably isn't a terribly safe endeavor.